Now here we are in a closet. You can see exposed insulation, which says we're outside the house, but you can also see paint carpet, which says we're inside. We also have a door behind us that's weather stripped, which says outside confused space. We like it. We won't talk about that right now because here we are with water heaters. What I'd like to explain quickly is how the combustion process works in any appliance, whether it's a boiler or a furnace or a water heater. This is a very simple way to explain this. So I'm gonna show you all the components of the combustion process and how we use testing to make sure that each one of them works the way that it's designed to. So we start at the bottom. First ingredient you need is fuel. You need to burn something. So this is called combustible gas, has not been burned yet. This is a combustible gas sniffer. What I wanna know is, is any of this very dangerous burnable gas getting out of the pipes? So all I'm gonna do is simply scan around each one of these once this thing is booted up. This is a very simple process. If I find anything with this, I would follow it up with soap bubbles to see if I can find where it's escaping so that then we can fix that. So now that we've tested the fuel leakage down below, we can monitor the air pressure in this room with my manometer here, which is the same tool that I use on the blower door. So I've got a hose going outside of this room with the door closed to make sure that when this fires on, it's not going to suck all the air out of the room. You know from the blower door test that sucking all the air out of a room is totally impossible. So if this were to eat up a lot of the oxygen in this room, which is very unlikely, then we could do something as extreme as this poke a hole in the outside wall to bring air in from outside. Don't let anybody tell you that that is necessary. What code says is that this room, because it's got combustion appliances in it, needs air from somewhere. It can be from the house. So if you simply put a grill into the interior of the house, it gets enough air and you can prove that with this pressure test. Right now you can see we're at zero. So there's no depressurization in here at all. The next thing that happens is we're gonna take this fuel and air and go inside and set the thing on fire. The throat, down in here, I'm going to monitor the contents of the combustion gases as they come up. I'm gonna monitor for temperature, the efficiency based on the oxygen level and the carbon dioxide level, and also the carbon monoxide level because that's very dangerous. Uh, and also things like nitrogen oxides and sulfur dioxide, all the stuff that's in gases that you just burned. You do not wanna breathe that stuff. So a water heater has two sides to the throat. Um, with kind of an agitator in the middle. You can monitor both sides if you think they might be different. So I'll do that. I also then want to make sure that at this draft control device, that's this black hood right here, that the gases always continue up through the chimney. And in fact, you can see that even when it's not running, the smoke is getting sucked up inside the chimney. And that is what I want. The last piece of this puzzle is I want to know exactly what that pressure inside that chimney is. So I put a pressure probe into the flue here. And now I can monitor the pressure in the flue. I can monitor whether it's spilling. I can monitor the content of the gases. I can monitor the air in the room that's being supplied for combustion. And I can tell whether I've got leakage. I have turned what was a very mushy, confusing process that a lot of people just think is mojo into a series of quantities and performance metrics that I can use to prove whether this machine is in tune or out of tune.